As always, it is great to have you stopping in. I'm the host of On Top and Hot. I am John Zadar, and this is Tuesday, September 27th. Now, as most of you probably know, we like to focus in on penny stocks and OTC stocks, not just any old stock. We're looking for stocks that got heat, some fire burning underneath them. Maybe they're running right now and we're looking for a continuation, or maybe they're setting up on the charts or they've got some news we're waiting for that we expect to make it run. Whatever it is, I'm going to share those sort of stocks with you. Now, a penny stock is any stock under five bucks, so we could easily be looking at stocks on the major exchanges, NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, and there's advantages to trading penny stocks on those major exchanges. First one I really like, you don't have any transaction fees, zero. I save $14 getting in and out of every trade. That's what it costs me to trade on OTC stock. But that's not the only reason I like no fees. It allows me to trade and play the game. If I have a thousand shares of stock at a dollar and it's at a dollar ten, but nobody wants to bid on it, I'll buy one share for a dollar ten and kick all my shares up ten cents. And I don't have to pay anything to buy that one share. Try that on the OTC market. Seven dollars to buy yourself a dollar ten share. Not a great deal. So I like the major exchange penny stocks, as well as the fact that there is a lot of people up there who have money. These are the people you want trading with, the ones that have unlimited capital that they can throw at a stock. So I enjoy the penny stocks on the major exchanges, but I like the opportunities that are availed to us through the OTC market. Now this news over here, that's all OTC news. This is news I've looked at over the last four or five days. There's no financial reports in there. There's no public offerings. These are events. These are things they're involved with. Joint ventures, acquisitions, mergers, deals they've made, products they've come out with, things like that. So if you haven't had time to go through the news, don't be bypassing this. I just don't put it up here to fill space on the page. I'm really trying to give you as much information as I can in the time that we share together. Now, I do all of my research over here at this site. This is where you'll always see me, otcmarkets.com. This site is updated every single day by FINRA and the SEC, and it's the only site I know of that does that for OTC stocks on the entire internet. So what's the point of running around the internet or even going to Google searching for current information when that's all this site posts is current information? At least start here. If you can't find what you're looking for, the internet's always there waiting for you. So let's take a look at how our OTC finished today. It's not good, folks. I mean, it's a little weird, actually. Our average for the longest time in dollar volume was 2.1. And it's been almost three weeks since we've been able to reach that. We have been really, really down low. Well, look at us today. For God's sake, we're at 3 billion. We blew our average of 2.1 billion by a long shot. Our share volume is ridiculously low. Oh my goodness, a week ago we were at 11 billion, which is nothing to brag about, but it's keeping us on our feet. 4.1 billion, I think yesterday we were just over 5 billion, so it's falling even lower. And our share, our trades, we've got 292,000. We've been between 250 and 300 on a good day. We're getting close to that 300. So what does this tell me here? This tells me that most of the shares being sold were expensive shares. So the cheap stocks were not selling as much as the more expensive stocks were today. So it was a weird sort of day. And I could tell following the trade page I go to here at the OTC market. You saw me there yesterday, the current market. I follow that every day. And today was a very weird day. So I've got some interesting stocks here, definitely do. And the one we've definitely got to talk about is GTII. It is under short attack right now, folks. And you've got to keep your eyes on it. So let's jump into the stocks I've got for you today, right now. All right, everything is baked, out and cooled and ready to be served. First one I got here is WDRP, Wanderport Court. Now Wanderport Court did not have any news today. She did not have any filings. What she does have is a barrage of tweets teaser tweets. They've been coming out all month. They're talking about streamlining the business, uh, changing operations. They're talking about acquisitions, partners, all sorts of stuff. And I'll share that with you here in a minute. So I think it's primarily running on hope and speculation. She finished the day at 0.0072 with just over 38% gains. 
Now they are on the pink limited tier, not a good place to be. This tells us that they are late on one or more of their financial filings and they have to get those caught up in a specified amount of time or they will be yanked off of the open market and put onto the expert market. Now the expert market isn't a delisting. Think of it more as a penalty box, a time out. They're throwing down there and they can't have their shares bought or sold while they're down there, a punishment, and they'll stay there until they get their filings caught up. And once they do, they'll come back on the market and everything is as it was. Now we know when they're going to be yanked off the market. That's important information. You don't want to be investing in a stock just before they get pulled off the open market and you can't do anything until they come back. Well, right here, Right here, it will say grace period. It'll be in yellow, and this gives them a 15-day countdown, but it doesn't tell you what the last day is. It just says they got 15 days. Well, if you come over here to quote right there, click that and come on down to where it says proprietary quote eligibility. It will say grace period right there, and it'll tell you the very last day they're going to be on the market. Definitely important information to have. So what is this company all about? Well, they tell us that Wanderport leverages blockchain, digital asset, metaverse technology to offer products and services in the areas of health and wellness and self-improvement. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Not bad. She went from 2.7 million a day for the last 30 days to up over 21 million. That's roughly 15 times her normal volume. Share structure, we'd like a low float. Well, like in one hand, and you know what they say to do in the other. No, we got closer to a half a billion shares. Nothing to get excited about. Financials. All right, at the end of last year, they did $100,000. We know that because there's three zeros we got to put behind all these numbers, and they got to keep about half of that. Quarterly, money most recently, well, they made $8,000 the first quarter of this year, and we see nothing for the second quarter, which is probably why they're late. Let's check over here at disclosures. There's March's quarterly right there. This is when they posted it, and this is what period it covered. So that's March quarterly. They don't have a June. You got December, March, no June. So once they get that last quarterly in, that's it. One filing, they'll be all caught up. They'll be out of danger. Shouldn't be any big deal. And SEC filings, we've got nothing down here since 2009. What about the news? Anything going on over there that's current? Most current piece of news they had here was back in March, and it was good news. The company announced they were doing a $10 million share cancellation. Well, okay, we are talking a very large float, right? So $10 million helps. Every little bit helps. All right, that is what they've got here. It is Twitter that has what we need to see. So we are over here at Wanderport's Twitter account. And I'm gonna show you right here, they've changed their description. Holding company with focus on automotive, clean energy, manufacturing, import, export. Well, we didn't see any of those words over in the description we just read. So they obviously have an idea of what they're gonna be doing. I'm just gonna go back here a few, let's start here at September 9th. These are the tweets they've been giving us. Due diligence continues on a few potential acquisition candidates. One is put on hold for now. Being optimistic with the others, we're considering expanding into a new business with a partner also. Same day they put out, our goal is to secure and cancel a block of shares in addition to the previously agreed to amount as part of the acquisition to minimize the dilution. So we're talking a partner, we're talking an acquisition, and we're talking another block of shares being taken away. Making good progress, working through the weekend to finalize things. We plan to provide an update soon. We've been asked for press release updates. Unfortunately, we cannot make any announcement while transactions are pending closing. So they're right in the midst of it. It's happening right now. So it sounds like an imminent thing, right? However, we will provide updates on other business developments when we have meaningful news to share. Then they go on saying, working with our partner, UA Multimedia, to take over our crypto-related assets as we focus more on new business. We're updating our website to reflect the new direction going forward. We expect the updated site to be live next week. That was on the 22nd. This is the 27th. Should be any day now, right? And the very last tweet we got was on the 23rd, four days ago. 
gradually divesting our existing business. They're getting rid of it and placing focus on automotive, clean energy, manufacturing, import, export. And that's it. We got nothing else to go on, folks. As I said, speculation, a mountain high. <laughs> so let's go take a look at that chart and see what she was doing today on all of this. We're going to be taking a look at WDRP on TOS. That's Thinkorswim. It's a free trading platform. If you like it, just go on over to TD Ameritrade, sign up for their free trading account, keep your account open. That's all you got to do. And you can use this anytime you like. So we are looking at a six month, four hour chart. We got a high bubble here just under a penny at 0092 six months ago. Here in May, we hit a low of 0022. And right now we are at mm, 007 and it is killing it, folks. She has been under the 200 primarily. She's tried to get over it a couple of times, but right now she isn't trying anything. She has launched and is on her way to another planet. Technicals are all skyrocketing. Every single one of them. I've actually got to scroll down to get some of the numbers. So everything looks hot right now on the four hour. Let's look at our 20 day, one hour view. So she was climbing very slowly with no aggression, but she was sitting on top of all of her SMAs. So everything looked kosher. And then what, five days ago, she changed her trend and has been growing. She did have a dip right there, but overall she is growing. She started down here at about uh, three and got to seven, two. So you got over 130% gains there in the last five days. Technicals are still raging. We are in the overbought on the RSI. MACD not only had a crossover coming out of that dip, it is raging up. We had that dip right there on our ADX shows it was falling. Now it's changed direction. As long as this line keeps going the same direction, that keeps going the same direction. And our PPO, our percentage price oscillator, much like the MACD, they're akin to each other. It's great. It, the blue line's over the pink and shooting for the stars. Love it. Let's look at our five day, five minute. Woohoo, look at that. Every day you get in in the morning, you make money in the afternoon. We did have some sideways tracking going here. She crossed her 50 day SMA, got above it again. And look, once she got above it, she took off. You see how small the bars got here. She really didn't want to fall. She was just accumulating. She was just taking care of business until she got ready to fly. And now she's bouncing off of that 50 all the way up. You can see that. And now she's actually floating on her nine day SMA, closing out the day at a high bubble of 0072. Volume was starting to come in at the end of the day. Technicals, we got a crossover in the MACD about ready to happen here and everything else looks good. This looks like it is ready for a continuation on speculation but speculation based on facts. I mean, what, what is it? A partner, an acquisition, uh, more shares being taken off, press releases coming out. They're going to be working with clean energy, automotive. We got a lot to work with there. So keep your eye on WDRP. Watch that volume. She is on a trend right now. Come on. You can see that. And she ended on a high bubble. She could take off tomorrow morning. I don't know if it'll be a run just to 10 and then a dip or if it's going to continue, but it's worth a watch. Now I'm going to presume most of you are familiar with this stock. We've talked about it before. This is Voyager Digital, ticker VYGVQ. That Q stands for bankruptcy. If you see a Q at the end of most tickers, I mean, some tickers actually have a Q at the end, but most tickers, it represents bankruptcy. And Voyager Digital, the cryptocurrency platform is in bankruptcy right now. It did drop hard. They had a surge after the bankruptcy was announced, which is par for the course. And then of course it fell. And there hasn't been a whole lot going on because we've been waiting for some new news to come out. What came out today? Ta-da! Big news. So Voyager finished the day at 17 cents with 70% gains. She's on the pink tier. She's current. She's got all those green ticks we like to see, but she's got that big red bankruptcy. She still is involved in that bankruptcy. So what was the relative volume around the company today? Well, she's normally only doing about three quarter million shares for the last month. As I said, it's been passive. It's been quiet. Today, she did 5.4 million. Share structure. I do believe I tried to find the float on this one and I couldn't find it. 
Um, they have 191 million outstanding. They tell us here that at the end of last year, the float was 166 million. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I don't know. What I do know is it's under 191 million. That much I know for a fact. Now, I found this curious. You think a company in bankruptcy just wouldn't have any money. They just kind of go hand in hand, right? <clears throat> Wrong answer. Their annual ends in the middle of the year. Last year in June, they did $175 million. Remember, we got to put three zeros behind that. But you say, okay, but that was last year. Now that they're in the bankruptcy, they should be broke. No. <laughs> the first quarter of this year, they did $102 million and got to keep $84 million. And I don't know what they're doing now, but somehow I don't get the feeling they're doing absolutely zip. Disclosures, we got anything current over here we should be aware of. May, they had management discussions and June, a deep form, but nothing there. So let's check out the news. The news is where it's all at right now. Uh, that is eight and oh, there's no news here. Well, I've got it saved over here. I don't know why they don't have it there. This came out to, uh, yesterday, September 26th. Voyager Digital LTD announced today that after multiple rounds of bidding in a highly competitive auction process that lasted two weeks, its operating company, Voyager Digital, selected West Realm Shires as the highest and best bid for its assets. FTX's U.S. bid is valued at approximately $1.4 billion. FTX US's bid maximizes value and minimizes the remaining duration of the company's restructuring. So the company isn't going anywhere. They normally don't if they have branding and value. This one's making millions of dollars every month, every month. So nobody's going to let it die. So they are restructuring. The asset purchase agreement between Voyager and FTX US will be presented for approval to the United States Bankruptcy Court for the Southern District of New York on Wednesday, October 19th, and the objection deadline to the transaction is October 12th. So, you don't hear any bad news by October 12th, it's going through most likely. And October 19th, we should get a final say. And I don't know if it's gonna bounce or not, but the fact of the matter is, it's coming out of the woods. It's coming out of the tunnel. They've found their saving grace, the restructuring, and they found a buyer. Everything is good. They're not as they were, but they're still alive and they're gonna continue on. Let's go take a look at that chart. So we're now taking a look at Voyager Digital. I've got two charts up because we've got two different tickers. We got the ticker before they went bankrupt and the ticker after they went bankrupt. And each ticker gets its own chart. So you can see that she was at about $11.50 six months ago. And just before the bankruptcy was announced, she was at a low of 22 cents before it was announced. Today, we're at 17 cents. So we are still below the low of that announcement. We did hit a high of 28 cents while she's been down here on the OTC. But all of this was just play, speculation, nothing real going on. Today is solid news. Today we have a buyer. Today we have a price. All we need now is the approval of the courts and they've given us a date. Just a couple more weeks we'll know one way or the other. And the way I see it, when you have a company doing 100 million plus every quarter, even through bankruptcy, nobody's going to let that die. And when it gets back on the market and gets respect, it's going to be worth more than 17 cents. So now is a very good time to look at it before that approval comes in. You may want to get yourself a starter position on this. Let's take a closer look at that chart then. We're on the four hour right now. Let's take a look at that 20 day, one hour view. So we hit a high here of 20 cents, which is still below the low we had back here she came all the way down to eight cents when was that was that today it sure was we had a low today of eight cents and boy did we ricochet look at that folks that news must have come out late everything ricocheted and shot up very very hard put everything above the 200. She did pop hard, but she came back down, but she's kept way more than 50%. Everything looks really hot still. All right, five day, five minute. So she did take a dip. As soon as the day opened up, she fell fast and hard, didn't she? Came right on down, hit that low, stayed down here, and then took off. And she ripped from, well, right there, eight cents up to 20 cents. 
So you're talking 150% gains. And well, that's from the low bubble. From the open, they say it's 70% gains. Where was she at open? Uh, about 10 cents. That still looks like 100%. She finished it. Okay, yeah, 70%. Right, 70%. But again, she went up and had a dip and came right back up. She's just holding those gains. So I think this is a good place to actually look at this stock. When this news comes in from the court, if nobody appeals it by what, the 12th, October 12th, if nobody says any reason why this deal should not happen, you know, like at a wedding, and it goes through, you know this company making that much money regularly is going to be worth more than 17 cents. So it's worth taking a starter position right now. Do I think it's gonna come down any further? It could come down to the 200, but I get the feeling excitement's gonna start building up around this. Cryptocurrency is still a big thing. Platforms are a big thing. This had a big name. I do believe they were selling Coinify. Coinify is another platform that they use to sell cryptocurrency. And I think they may have had to release that as part of the conditions. You'll have to do some more DD. But I would keep my eye on Voyager. Definitely, the big news is here. You don't want to miss it when they make the decision. So let's talk about GTII. This is an exciting stock that I've been watching for a few days. Global Tech Industries Group is getting a lot of attention from investors, and that is understating it. Folks, take a look at this. 8,818 trades today. This is a page over here at the OTC Markets current market page advances. I love this page. It's one of my favorites because it's one of the only places I can get how many trades the company is doing that day. And why is that important? Why well, equate it to people? I mean, think of it this way. You see this one here that says eight. Okay. I can guarantee you there is not more than eight people interested in that stock. Not more than eight people are trading it right now. We know that, right? So I want big numbers. So I come down here and there, 921. I know there's more than eight people there, right? There's a few hundred. Truth of the matter is there could be 921 people there. And the more people, the more reason you should be looking at it because they're all looking at it for some reason. Well, look at our number again, 8,800, almost 9,000 trades today. Folks, Right there, that 1,000 trades, that is an incredible number, especially considering the type of market we had today. This is outstanding. This doesn't make sense. And here's the kicker. Monday, they did 6,000 trades. Yesterday, Friday, they did 4,000 trades. Thursday, they did 3,000 trades. I have not seen a company climbing in trades consecutively day after day like this company is right now. That is like 20, 21,000 trades in the last four trading days. I don't think I've ever seen that. Why is it happening? Well, the way I gather it, there is a short attack going on right now. The shorters are trying to bring the price down and the company, that's right, the company is trying to give value to the shareholders so that we pick the price up and the battle is going on. That's what's happening right now. Now, how does that make the price go up? Well, real quickly, this is what shorting is all about. A shorter borrows shares. Where do they get those shares? From me and you. We buy them and if we're not selling them, they're just sitting there and the broker lets those be borrowed. What does he do with them? Well, he sells them right now. He sells them and he gets all that money. And then he's hoping that the price is going to fall. And when it falls, he can then buy them back at a cheaper price, keep all that extra money for himself and put the shares back. But if the price starts going up, he wants to buy those shares as fast as he can so that he doesn't lose any money. And as the price is going up from us bidding it up with value, they start to panic and try to sell or try to buy as fast as they can. And when you have lots of shorters panicking on top of investors investing, you can get a price running. And if there is a supply and demand, which that means nobody wants to sell their shares because they're going up in value, nobody wants to sell, these guys can't find any shares to buy. And the price is going up because there's just so few shares. And that's when you get AMC sort of prices, maybe even gain. I don't know, but that's what it's looking like is going on right now. And for the last 
four days, it has consecutively been growing, now getting faster, went from three to four to six to almost nine. But the company is doing things, and that's what I want to show you. The company is, for all practical purposes, kind of more or less a shell company. Yes, they do have subsidiaries. I'll show them to you. Yes, they do have some assets, and they are increasing. And yes, they've had a little bit of revenue, so they're not a shell or shell risk. But they're not doing anything impressive. But they are trying to pass on value to the shareholders to make it appealing to us because we're the ones that raise the price of the stock, right? They've got to appeal to us and that's what they're doing. And I'm going to share that with you here in just a minute. So what was the relative volume around this company today? Well, she was normally doing about a half a million shares a day for the last 30 days. She's doing 8.7 million now. Now here's the big thing. You don't have to buy a lot of shares for a short attack. You just gotta buy enough to push the price up. That's all you gotta do. So it really isn't about share volume. We're not looking for a, you know, a billion shares to be sold. Matter of fact, if you see less shares being sold and lots of trades, you know what's going on. You can see single bullets being shot back and forth. So we've got 8.7 million, which is still over 16 times her normal volume. Share structure. Well, that's not a bad float. Nice float to be playing with when you're going to be in this sort of situation where it could skyrocket to $70. I mean, honestly, you don't know where silly stuff like this can end up when a, uh, a short squeeze happens, meaning there's just not enough shares for those guys to cover their shorts. They can't get the shares back in time and they've got to. They have no ifs, ands, or buts, and they may end up paying a lot more than they wanted to pay, and that helps anybody who's holding those shares. So $64 million, not a bad float. What are the financials for this company? Well, they did $24,000 at the end of last year, and quarterly right now, nada, not a single thing. Disclosures, all right, this is where we can start to get some information. Now, we've got a couple of 8Ks here. This first 8K is about them bringing in new directors, some new management and stuff. And then if I remember correctly, this 8K had to do, well, let's just jump in there real quick because I want to share some information with you. I want you to know what this company is. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. This is actually, they are actually telling us about a deal that they made a while ago, which I'm going to share with you here, where they have opened up a... I guess you'd call it a platform to sell gold on over in the Dubai area. So as a matter of fact, let's just jump into that right now. So I'm over here at their most recent 10Q. I'm getting all this information here and I just want to dab on to some strong pieces of information, some you probably aren't aware of. So their total assets, this is from the end of last year to June. So you're talking a six month difference here. That's all we got. They went from $8.4 million to $13.4 million. So they've gone up about $5 million in assets in the last six months. Uh, revenues, they've got none. We've got no revenues up here at all, but they do have operating expenses of uh, just under a million dollars a year whatever that is, office, uh, payroll, whatever it is, they've got expenses. Then I've got some information down here that most people just overlook. Here is a list of their subsidiaries. Their wholly owned subsidiaries are Ludacris Inc., TTI Strategic Acquisitions and Equity Group, Classroom Salon Holdings, TTII Oil and Gas, and GT International, known as GTI. All subsidiaries of the company other than TTI Strategic Acquisitions and Equity Group currently have no financial activity. So they're dormant, but they do have them. Some more pieces of information you may find interesting. On February 28, 2021, pursuant to a stock purchase agreement between the company Gold Transaction International and the company, they assumed a lease agreement held by GTI. The license provides access to a joint venture of companies that buys gold from artesian miners internationally and then is allowed to sell it in the free trade zone over in Dubai. 
And that is what that 1.8K was about, that deal right there. They are focusing in on that right now. I don't know how much, but they seem to be focusing in on that. The acquisition of GTI is being treated as an asset purchase and not a business combination. So they're not even looking at it as a subsidiary in that sense. Here's another one. On May 1st, 2021, the company entered an agreement with Alt-5 Sigma, wherein Alt-5 licensed their Alt-5 Pro digital asset platform to the company and created Beyond Blockchain, a digital asset trading platform to be used by the company and its shareholders and the public for trading digital assets. So they have access to a trading platform to trade digital assets, whether that be NFTs or crypto. But I do believe it's for NFTs because here, now this is something I bet most people don't know about this company. On April 7th, 2021, the company acquired two pieces of art for eventual digitization as non-fungible tokens, NFTs. On April 23rd, the company purchased an original Picasso called Quantre Fiends News Ented Sculpte, which was executed in 1934. That's what it says. And then here on June 4th, 2021, the company purchased another piece of fine art, an Andy Warhol gelatin silver print of Bianca Jagger on a white horse. So these are things they've actually invested in. They are going to be making NFTs. They have a digital platform that they can use to sell their digital assets. And they've got something going on with gold over in Dubai. All of that is happening right now. Now I want you to see the news because the news tells us a little bit more that you cannot overlook. All right. Uh, as a matter of fact, I think I've got this highlighted so we didn't miss it. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Had a lot of pages to share with you. This news just goes back to July. Globetech Inc. provides new updates to shareholders regarding digital dividend. This is the first time they say, we got dividends we want to give you. This is their first counterattack to the shorters. We're going to give you value. So rather than give uh, shares or do a buyback or something like that. They wanted to make it directly to the shareholders and not just the share value. So they wanted to give us a digital dividend. But FINRA said, no, you can't do it. And they asked why. And they said, we don't know how to do it. We, we just can't do that yet. So they couldn't do that. Um, then they had news here that and this one was just the other day. Global Tech Industries Group announced a share exchange agreement with Wildfire Media Corp. And this is a company that deals with 1-800-LAW-FIRM. That is their company and they deal with a lot of legal aspects and they've got an incentive program. They got to make $25 million, I think in the next year, gross revenue, and they get like a hundred million extra shares. And there's a lockup so that the new company can't sell any of their shares. If we push the price up, they have to hold them for a year before they're allowed to sell them. So you had that come into the picture and then news came out today. And I was going to talk about all of this until I saw this news. Now, this news came out today, and I want to be totally honest with you. I don't completely understand it. I know it's putting more value on the table, but I still don't get it. They tell us here that Global Tech Industries announces a board decision to set a new strike price for the outstanding warrants. A Global Tech Industries requests to lower the original strike price of the warrants, which they distributed last year to a new strike price of $2 from the original of $2.75, which appears to be within reach, but they want to give more back to their shareholders. And the process to change the strike price and to register the underlying stock with such new strike price will be underway shortly. Here's the confusion, folks. Strike price is what I put with options. It's the bullseye. It's the target of what I'm shooting for. I can get close to it, but that's my bullseye, the strike price. But warrants are promissory notes. They're coupons that allow you to trade your stock in that warrant sometime in the future for a guaranteed low price to buy a share of stock. But the two together, I've never heard of a warrant being an option. Now, to be completely honest, DATS owes me some options. I don't know if they call them warrants or not. I've never been given free options. I don't know how that works. But they have lowered the price here to make it appealing to their loyal 
shareholders to actually buy more. I don't see anything here to appeal to new shareholders. We would just get in because of the attack. We see the price going up. It's like we don't care what has caused the wave. It could have been an earthquake, which was bad news. But the wave is a lot of fun way over here on this shoreline. And we surfers just want to get on those waves. But they are appealing to the investors who are already in there. So they're getting everybody involved, aren't they? Because usually the guys inside are just waiting for everyone else to jump on board. Now the company's trying to intrigue them as well. Let's go take a look at that chart and see what it looks like. See if there's any waves on it. GTII, uh, we had a huge fall here. Been bouncing off of that low bubble ever since. Here's our waves and we are hanging 10 to the factor of 10 with this tsunami right here. We had a high bubble today of $2.70 and this all began a few days ago at 60 cents. So you're looking at like 450% gains over the last four or five days and she's crushed the 200. Left that in the dust. All of our technicals, every single one of them is screaming up right now. They're all just reaching for the highest atmosphere they can get 20 day one hour view well there's those four days thursday friday monday tuesday you had three thousand trades four thousand trades six thousand nine thousand trades the shorters won it on this day three out of four they are getting their butt kicked technicals are still ripping right now and we are just about ready to go into the overbought on the rsi everything looks really hot Coming down to that five day, five minute. All right, she's got some volatility in there. There's no doubt. It is a battle, folks. There's a fight going on. Some people want to pull this down and some people want to push it up. You're probably going to hear some rumors, some lies out there. Honestly, there's a fight going on and any weapon is constituted as almost legal. So be careful with this stock, but there is a lot of trades incredible amount of trades we've got some huge rips some huge dips some huge rips huge rips and dips but she is working her way up right now technicals looks like she still wants to go folks we were ripping right here we're getting above our 200 day haul which is a great thing and our ppo is pushing up we have a change of direction here. I don't know about this. That's, that one's tough to read for me. MACD, I definitely understand. That's positive. And we just hit the overbought on our five minute. Folks, I like this one. You cannot ignore GTII. You just cannot ignore it, folks. This can run silly. It can do some great big bounces. But don't get too greedy. Honestly, folks, we are down here at $2.50. If this thing goes to $40 or $50, take something. I'm not saying sell everything, but take some gains. You know you're way ahead. You want to let something stay in there to get $70 or $100. You think it could go super duper silly? That's fine. But when she gets to a point to where you're just kind of nervous and wetting yourself, wondering what's going to happen, and you just can't get your hand off the button, take some. Scratch that itch. Feel good and put some money in your pocket. Leave some out there, some, so you can play the game. But take your gains. GTII, it's the one to watch right now, folks. Told you they were interesting stocks. Wanderport, it's all speculation, but they got something going on here. Not quite sure how the pieces are going to fit together. Don't know how far it's going to run, but it looks like it's ready to pop when they drop the right piece of news or tweet, as it'll probably be. Then, of course, you've got Voyager. Voyager is worth a lot of money, and they're very, very cheap right now, and they look like they're going to get back into the game of business as usual. So you might as well get on board before that takes off, like I did with Hertz. And finally, you got that last one, GTII. Have you ever played a short? Did you miss AMC in game? This could be your opportunity, folks. I've never seen trade activity like that before on the OTC market. It is hot. So keep your eye on them. Remember, folks, DD is how I find all of these. It's fun. Actually, actually fun. Remember, the more you know, the more you're going to grow. See ya.